I'm Barb Chernichan, and I design quilt patterns under the name Coach House Designs. I've just designed a new pattern called the New Groovy, which features Kath Facet's newest colors of shots and stripes. I've put together this video to give you some tips on how to put this quilt together. I'm also going to demonstrate my applique technique, which is an easy way to do hand applique, which you then apply by machine. What I'm showing you now is the layout of the center of the quilt top and it has the lines drawn on it to give you a guide to help you place the applique shapes once they've been completed. There are five different applique shapes on the quilt top. The first one is circle A, circle B, circle C which is made up of the outside spokes and two center circles circle D, which is made out of two outside spokes and two circles, and circle E, which is made up again of two outside spokes and two inner circles. The first step in preparing the appliques is to place them on a light table. If you don't have a light table available, you can hold them up to a window. We're then going to put freezer paper on top of the templates and trace out the image right along the lines. When you're done tracing the template onto the freezer paper, cut it out along the drawn lines. You then take the template and press it onto the correct fabric on the top of the fabric. The next step is to cut the fabric out around the edge of the template. So you cut it out about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the paper template. When you get to an inside corner, you snip into the corner and then this portion of the template is actually not going to be seen from the outside so we can cut right along the edge and then we come back to the next side and back at an eighth of an inch. Here are two examples of what the applique templates will look like after you finish cutting out the fabric edges. You can see we've cut right to the line on the center because when the applique is put together that portion will be covered so we don't need to provide extra fabric there. So all the extra edges are going to be your finished edges of your applique. And again here's the circle with the eighth of an inch edge all around. We've now finished cutting out the fabric edges along the side of the templates. The next two things that you need is quilting basting glue and an awl. If you don't have an awl, you can use the pointy end of your seam ripper. So we're going to turn the template upside down and use our glue do a very thin amount of glue along the overhanging edge of the template. You don't want to have too much glue because then it will show up on the other side of the fabric. So using the tip of your awl and your finger, bend the fabric back along the edge of the template and use your awl to secure the fabric down with the fabric glue. And we're going to do the other side. Again, you see there's very little glue on there, just enough to hold the fabric down. When we get to the end, we'll put fabric or glue across the top as well. Bend the fabric back and press it in place. In order to get rid of these corners that stick out, take your scissors and just trim those off to create a mitered edge on those corners so they don't stand out. Here is what the back of the template shape should look like when you're finished. The edges have been folded along the, the edge of the template and are now secured to the back with the liquid basting glue. And this is what it looks like when you turn it over. 
and when you're completed, make sure you take the paper off right away so that the glue does not stick to the paper and get stuck to the top of your template shape. If any glue appears along the edges of the template, this will disappear when it's washed because the glue is water soluble. So we've now completed the two spokes. We're going to place one on top of the other. And now we have to do the circles. So here's the circle shape. And again, you're going to turn it to the back. Use your glue along the edge and turn the edge as you did before. Circles are a little bit more challenging just because you want to make sure that you're maintaining that curve. But the good thing about using an awl is that you can adjust the fabric as you go so that it clearly follows the edge of the template. The circle is now complete and it goes over the spokes. So you can see that these parts here that we didn't finish don't need to be finished because they're not going to be showing. And then we take the center and then I like to take a pin to pin this together and then we're ready to place it on the background. The fabric we're using for this project is Calf Facets Cottons, which are a beautiful fabric with different colors woven in different ways so that as you hold it up to the light you can see different colors. However, because it is woven and because it is fine, when you place machine applique on top of it and try and attach it to the background, because it is so fine, it gets pulled down into the needle well of the machine and becomes very frustrating. So in order to stabilize the fabric in the background, you need to back it with a very fine muslin fabric. Here is one of the background strips. They're 64 by 12 and a half inches wide. You can really see the difference in the color. You can see this fabric actually is purple and green woven together to make blue. In order to stabilize the background, I've cut the exact same dimension of muslin and placed it underneath the background fabric on top. So as you move it down, we're just going to place it so that the edges line up. I've actually cut the muslin just a little bit longer, just to be sure, because I didn't want it to be too short, and we will trim it off later. We are then going to use 505 basting spray to join the two pieces of fabric together. This product, like the glue, is water soluble and will disappear when the quilt is washed. So what we're going to do is just pull back the top fabric about halfway and then just lightly spray the basting spray. We don't want too much, but just enough to keep it together. And then pull the top down, lining it up with the edges. If you make a mistake and it doesn't fall the way you want it to, it's very easy just to lift it up like here we have a little fold in the fabric. Just lift it up, smooth it out, and press it back down. I then like to just run an iron over it just to make sure that there aren't any wrinkles that are going to get in the way when we're applying the appliques. The border is made up of four and a half by eight and a half inch pieces, which we'll explain later, which helps you position the side um, circles on the edges of the border. In order to prepare these, I've, I use a top of a lid just to give me some place to spray so it doesn't get on the ironing board because it's a smaller piece. And then again you're just placing the fabric and smoothing it in place. 
We are now back looking at the layout which is provided with the quilting pattern. As you can see, there are lines drawn in it. The vertical lines represent the seams as the background is made up of four 12 and a half by 64 inch strips. The horizontal lines are uh, positioned at the half and at the quarter of the length of your quilt. So in order to mark those lines on your quilt top background, you can fold your background in half and then again fold it to the center. And that way you will create those creases in your fabric and will allow you to have some reference when placing your appliques on the quilt top. Here is the border that I've already prepared. As you can see, the template is in a half circle. To make this half circle, the pieces are at, here's the seam line of the four and a half by eight and a half inch background piece. So there's a piece that goes, lines up with this seam line and there's a piece that lines up with this seam line. So here are the shapes here. In order to make the half circle look proper so that the lines continue in a fan, make sure that when you place your template pieces on the striped fabric that you put them side by side so that when you cut them out they'll look like a continuous fan. As you can see from the cover image, the circles in the corner are actually a three-quarter circle as opposed to a half. So when you're placing the templates on the striped fabric, place your third template shape as it would appear on the border to again maintain the design of the stripes. When you're cutting out the templates for the border, the area between the spokes is much narrower. So cut along again about a an eighth of an inch and you're going to be left with a very skinny little piece. But these pieces have to be folded to the back like the other ones. So just cut into the corners like that. What I'm showing you now is the top border and the right side border. Because each of the circles has a center, we want to make sure that when we join the borders together at the side, these line up. So and before I've placed or attached this half circle to the side border, I've attached the quarter one to the top border and I'm laying it down here to make sure that those edges match and then I'm just going to pin this in place so that when I sew this to the background, I know it will be in the correct position.